The Full Circle Podcast. Compelling interviews and incredible tales from Colorado's Western Slope, from the mountains to the desert. Christy Reese and her team hear from the movers, shakers, and characters of the Grand Valley and surrounding mountain towns that make the Western Slope the place we all love. You'll learn, you'll laugh, you'll love with the Full Circle. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Full Circle Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Reese, and I'm so excited today to have two of my favorite local artists from the Grand Valley, Miss Amy Purser, Mrs. Amy Purser, and Mrs. Erin Stevens Marner. Welcome. Hello. Oh, thank Hi. you so much. Good I'm, to be here. I am such a fan of both of your work, and I was just really excited to think about hosting you all and talking about the art scene in the Grand Valley, what's going on now, what you're seeing, how it's improving, what we can still do to make it even better, because I think we have some room for growth there. Yeah, there is a lot happening, though. Yeah. Um, would you like to talk about that I, first? Well, you just had a show. I did. So I do. You should, you, should talk <laughs> about, you should talk about it first. Then I can okay, so before you talk about yeah. your show, talk a little bit about your background. I want to know... Um, uh, because you're both, you both grew up in Grand Junction. Yes. Uh, I want to know a little bit about your history and then your art media. Okay. Well, yes, I did grow up in Grand Junction um, with an artist's dad. So I, I guess I've been around art my whole life and um, it's in me. I love mm-hmm. it. And I uh, did get a BFA right here at CMU and that's where I met Erin. Yeah, we were in we were in class together. Yeah, we which were. Which I can't buddies. remember which class. <laughs> but we were in class together. Well, I was over in the two dimensional um, department, but sometimes I would come over to the three D side where you were at, and, and I, sometimes I, I would come over to the two <laughs> D every now and again. We were destined to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I got my education here and um, have done lots of uh, I guess freelance type work, commission work over the years, mm-hmm. but also taught for fifteen years. Um, kids and grown-ups of all ages, starting from two. I think my oldest student was like 88 years old. And wow. um, I've done a little bit of adjunct work at the college too, and um, just kind of floated around. But over the past um, two or three years, I've really just focused on my artwork. That's what I set out to do originally. Mm-hmm. Um, had a couple kids, started another business, and got a little sidetracked. Yeah. So um, now that's where I'm at, and it's been great. Um, Showing around uh, Colorado right now at this point, um, in town and a little bit out of town. And um, yeah. So, will you tell us a little bit about the media that you like to work with? Oh, sure. Um, I've dabbled in everything, but right now, what I seem to be um, enjoying the most is uh, working on paper or um, wood or canvas. And I use a lot of acrylic paints, but kind of a mixed media technique. I sometimes use some wax. I like using graphite. I like to just kind of mix it up and get in there with my hands, almost um, a sculptural type process, even Mm -hmm. though it's painting. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. We have a piece right here in the office and we're going to show you some pictures of that and and other pictures of Amy's work. So excited about that. Thank you. All right, Erin, your turn. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about yourself and and your artwork. Well, I also grew up in the Grand Valley um, and grew up in an art family as well. My grandfather didn't grow up here in the Valley, but grew up in Glenwood Springs and uh, went away to be an artist in Paris and was part of the WPA arts movement back in the 40s. That's so Um, cool. But came back, he was actually the head of the Columbia University Art Department and brought back a bunch of people to Redstone and then just grew up immersed sort of in that, in that art world, which I think when you, I mean, you touched on this, but when you're steeped in art, like you can try to run from it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I I have. (laughs) I definitely tried to run from it, but uh, wound up back there and, you know, left the valley, but came back to... Mm -hmm to work and raise a family here Mm -hmm. and teach. That's what I originally came back for, but. And pottery is, is what you work with mostly? Pottery and printmaking. I still Mm -hmm. do a lot of printmaking, um, but sort of the marriage of those two. And that's why I asked, I wasn't sure whether you were in printmaking with me, but. Oh, I did take that class. Yeah, I think we did. (laughs) That was it. (laughs) But I mean, I love, I love printmaking and I wanted to marry those those two Mm -hmm. mediums. And I've tried and I do a little bit of that in almost every kiln load. I do some printmaking on clay. So cool. And we have, so we have Amy's art on the wall here. And then we have um, these lovely mugs that Aaron (laughs) made. And also my earrings 
were made by Aaron and um, love going to your shows, um, holiday shows and things oh, like yeah. that. Thank you. Yep. All You're a stuff. great supporter of the arts. You are. Well, you yeah. are. Keep bringing it. <laughs> Keep bringing it. So let's go back to your show, Amy. Tell us about the show that you have opened and how long it runs and what people can see there. Okay. <clears throat> well, this show is out in a new space called Orbit Art Space, and it's in Fruta, Colorado. It's a really nice kind of eclectic space. It's, it's fairly new, like I said. I think it's been open maybe about a year. And um, Garrett Day is the owner. He's already brought in so many different kinds of art and people that maybe you didn't know about but probably live here because a lot of artists in Grand Junction kind of have to be coaxed out, I've noticed, but there is some <laughs> real talent here. Uh -huh. And um, it's been really, really fun to just kind of see what he's been doing. Um, he's also got some kind of gift items. I do believe you've got some things also there for yeah, sale. Yeah, and you're right. He does coax out the artists in the Valley because there is <laughs> yeah. an immense amount of talent here. But he absolutely... Well, he came to me and said, I want you in the gallery. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. just wanna, and I said, how long has he been yeah. in there? I think it's been about a year. I, okay. I'm, I might be wrong on that, but it hasn't been real long. But he has also done some pretty interesting shows like um, he's had some performance type things happening there. Some oh, music nice. and different, um, I think some film projection stuff that I didn't see, unfortunately, but I heard it was really amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, my show right now uh, runs throughout, eight, throughout May. It just opened up, and it's titled Past Presence. kind of deals a lot with um, time and just things that I'm thinking about right now. And it's all painting. It's all two-dimensional work. Mm -hmm. But the, the one large horizontal piece that had the birds and the flowers, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that process. It was oh, really unique. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, that's a little bit different than the other pieces in the show, and it's bigger. Um, that piece was originally done to um, go to the Aspen City Hall. They have a new building that they constructed a couple of years ago, and um, they brought in 10 different artists to display work temporarily for about, um, I think it was a year and a half. And so my piece was one of those and I was extra Amazing. proud because I was the only one that wasn't from the Roaring Fork Valley. So uh -huh. they, they brought in a foreigner, <laughs> <laughs> which felt really good coming from the West Slope. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that piece has four panels all put together in a horizontal format. And it has a lot of kind of etched in, kind of goes back to printmaking. I love um, back when I used to do that, just the etching into the plate that you print with. I like mm -hmm. the plate itself just as much as I like the print oftentimes. Yeah. So that piece has a lot of birds and flowers kind of etched into it and butterflies. And they represent the migratory species that um, migrate between Mexico and our particular area of the Western Slope. Neat. Oh, it's just beautiful. Oh, thank so you. So those of you that are listening or watching, make sure you get out to Orbit Art Space in Fruta and see Amy's show. And I was really excited to go there because um, I'd, I'd not known anything about this space. Yeah. I know about the farm as we have our new office in Fruta and the farm's right behind us. And then I was like, oh, it's just right here. It's, it's right, right off the circle. Yeah. And it's a beautiful little space. It's really neat. It's mm -hmm. in the historical building that used to be kind of a, um, next to the bank that was there. And yeah, it's from the 1800s. It's really neat. And um, that whole section of Fruta, well, all of Fruta is really becoming a place that's worth visiting. So yeah. Garrett does hold um, First Friday events out there. So yeah, totally worth the trek. Yeah, he does a great job curating mm -hmm. what comes mm -hmm. into the gallery and and supporting the local yes. artists. And I think as artists, we're just so happy to have some wall space. Yes. And that is something that's really changing, too, around the Grand Valley. There are more and more places that are um, that are specifically for artists to show, which is a new thing. We'll talk about that some more. Um, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> you have your own pottery studio I do on your have, property, I do and you're teaching own. classes now? I am teaching classes, but I'm teaching them at the farm out in Fruta. So I'm uh -huh. trekking across the valley. Okay, I didn't realize that. <laughs> to go to the farm to teach, um, which is a great, I mean, I wish that every every town in the valley had a little uh, art center. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that Palisade eventually gets their own little art center, clay center as well. But I am teaching out there, and it's great. It's a great space. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it through um, Ashton Means. Do you know Ashton? I, I, know. I know Ashton yes. Means. Uh, Ashton Means and Matthew Jones have a have a space that they've rented. But the art center, I'm not sure exactly how this works, but the art center also books classes through them. So I'm teaching through the art center, but in their studio. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's been amazing. The love of clay. I mean, people just, that whole bringing people in to work in clay, it's like they've learned to play Uh again. You know, I've seen just some of the pictures right? of your ladies, uh, most yeah, of them, yeah, I think, is, in the group at this point. Women, yeah. It's open to everyone, I'm sure. It is open to everyone. <laughs> no and discrimination. Yeah. It just looks like so much fun. I mean, well, there's smiles think, on their faces, and that's something that I think would be a, a really fun and kind of a safe place to try it out, too. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, it really is. I think the people that are coming in to take it, they're getting out of their comfort zone. Mm. It's not – I mean, creating art is always – I don't know. We learn that at well, a young age. Right. right? Yes. But like they say, yes. what, what age is it when people start saying they're not artists anymore? Like children will say they are artists. Until and they hit teenagers. Teenagers. Right? And then you start being self-conscious about your abilities. Yeah. And then you, people say, I'm not creative. I'm not an artist. And there's something messy enough about clay that I think it, it I don't know, it unlocks something mm-hmm. for people that it's like, oh, I am my hands (laughs) stuck into a mud pie Uh that I'm going to turn into. You can't can't be too uptight or precious about it. No, you cannot be precious. (laughs) (laughs) You cannot be precious about it. Forget the manicure. Yeah, yeah, forget the manicure. But there's a lot of science. I mean, you, you know, there's a lot of science behind the clay piece of it too. I mean, right? I it's the, not yes. as much, it, you can't just like throw it in a regular no. oven and no. think it's going to come out. No. And I think, I mean, this goes back to my, you know, being raised in the Valley, but my dad was a science, he was a geology mm. oh, okay. teacher. And so that marriage of the art and the science piece yeah. of it is, yeah, I love it. That's so perfect yeah. for you. It is. It is. <laughs> So, Erin, um, talk a little bit about the Palisade art scene, because you live in Palisade, and um, I know there's been some changes with Blue Pig Gallery, and what do you see happening there in the art scene? <laughs> well, I don't know what is happening right now. I don't really the, know I don't details. Really know not, details. Not that we're yeah, the ones no. to, to unfold that no, right? here, but like yeah. in general. I mean, Palisade has a huge thriving art scene. Mm-hmm. I'm part of the we don't call ourselves a board because we're not elected, but the council that brings in the sculptures that are on Main Street. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we get people, we try to limit it just to a regional uh, artist, but we get, we get entries from all over America. Cool. And so I love that Palisade really has grabbed onto this whole thing of making space. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they are, they're all about creating this town that you visit that isn't just, you know, agriculture, but it's also art and wine and all of that. And yeah. I mean, we're thriving, yeah, which is terrific. And I think that, I think Palisade is, you know, everyone is growing. We're you know, COVID. I mean, I think COVID had that whole thing where people decided, oh, we can work wherever we right. want to work. Let's where go to Western Colorado. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Western Colorado. And I think, you know, I mean, it's a gem. It is. I mean, it's part of why I came back here. I left and moved away and lived everywhere yeah. I possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, yeah, the Valley is, I mean, we are really fortunate. hmm to have what we sure. have here in the valley. And I mean, yeah, I think Palisade is really that main street is thriving. There's a couple of different spaces, Harlow that has my mm-hmm. earrings and then um the atrium. Mm-hmm. Have you been to the atrium? I have. Have you been yet. to the atrium? Not it's yet. beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So and, nice. And that Sage Creation Organic Farm is that's who owns the atrium. So they have okay. all their plants and all of that stuff. Oh, there, which I is, that? I, I need know. to get out there. And they have really good sardines. Okay. <laughs> That's I mean, like if a you're local a, secret right there. If you're a sucker for good olive oil and sardines, which I am, <laughs> that's where you go. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about Palisade, a little bit about Fruta. Amy, what's going on in Grand Junction? Well, there's some really cool stuff on the horizon in Grand Junction that I'm really excited about. Um, I'll backtrack a little bit to something that's that happened pre-COVID and now is kind of coming back again. But um, a good friend, Joseph Gonzalez, does kind of a pop-up type um, experience, I guess you could call it. And that's at the Omnia Gallery, which um, isn't always a gallery, but for these Friday night adventures, he, mm-hmm. he does this huge pop-up thing. And it's so cool. It's right next to the Avalon Theater on Main Street. Mm-hmm. So it's a great place to hang out. And whenever he puts together a show, 
I, again, people it's come insane. out of the woodwork. It's insane. He has, I think, single-handedly um, changed things around here because mm-hmm. I mean, we have the art center, and that's an awesome thing. And it and it and I want really... to talk about that some more too. Okay, yeah. Yeah. well, that <laughs> really suits the needs of people, and it's been here since. I mean, I was a little tiny kid going to the art center, you know. So it's something that we count on and we need here. But Joseph has kind of opened our eyes to a more contemporary, sort of modern and younger set of artists that Mm -hmm. I guess I'm old enough I didn't even know existed. (laughs) But it's so cool because um, it's really brought out a lot of variety. And um, these shows tend to sell a lot of pieces, too. The prices are right. Um, the gathering is always huge. He's got mm-hmm. a really narrow space. Mm-hmm. So even with 10 people in, it feels fun and lively. He has great food. It means that there's a lot of people milling outside and it gets yes. other people excited. And Absolutely. Yeah. And it's enriching for the downtown because everyone, every time that he has one of those shows, it seems like, I mean, you walk downtown and someone, I mean, there's people that are waiting to get in that are going to have dinner or they're yes. going to go have drinks or mm-hmm. And and I and I mentioned young artists, but really there's a wide range. I show there sometimes. You've shown there, haven't you? I have oh, not. She will be showing there. <laughs> <laughs> He's talked to me about it. Yeah. <laughs> if I would stop making mugs and start making, I mean, not to say that mugs aren't art, but you know, a different kind, different utilitarian, kind. Different. but but yeah. very appreciated. <laughs> um, well, yeah, he gets all different ages in there, all different kinds of artwork. It's just been really fun, and it has opened my eyes. But also, um, I, you know, I grew up here. Mm-hmm. My dad was one of the founders of Art on the Corner. I knew that set of artists, you know. And then, you know, in between those older guys, there have been a few different movements yeah. here and there, you know. There was um, Kayle Lowry, who had the Planet Earth and the Four Directions Gallery, and she kind of helped to spark some things. And there have always been the ongoing brush and palette clubs and those things that are kind of staples here. But Joseph, I think, is the one who's kind of... Um, brought us into the next century, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it's really, really great. So I'm happy for him. He also uh, was was one that kind of nagged me into showing again. So he kind of helped me break the ice and just get back out there. But anyway, so he's back up and running. He took some time off with COVID. It was just impossible. Mm-hmm. So he's back up now. So be watching for shows from him. Great. And then um, also the thing that I'm working on right now with a group um, is called the Terminal Project. It doesn't sound very good, but it's, it's the old bus station, the terminal. Yes. yes. Tell us a little, what you know about that. Okay. Well, I've been on a committee of about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 people right now that um, have put together a survey. Um, it was given out to as many people in Grand Junction and the Valley that we could get. Um, and that survey uh, basically was asking people what kind of an art experience or housing maybe for artists, spaces for artists, just in general, what do we need here to... What are we lacking? What are we lacking? Mm -hmm. Yep. For creative people to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so it was really amazing and interesting and very eye-opening what came back on that survey. We do need more studio spaces. We do need more affordable housing, like apartments Mm -hmm. for um, creative people. Um, I would like to see different things come in, like um, bringing in artists from different areas to do maybe temporary stays at this place you know Mm -hmm. it's going to be really cool so the terminal itself is the old bus station yeah they're keeping the antenna is like fifth and yeah Yeah. you you fifth and you yeah Yeah. there's a design firm that um the town is working with so gj creates is really a big part of this downtown the city of grand junction um is working with a design company in Aspen to kind of renovate that old bus station. And the bottom level, it's still kind of in flux right now, the design, Mm -hmm. but what I've seen, the renderings are amazing. The bottom level still looks like the original bus station. It'll keep that kind of 30s or 40s charm that it has. Yeah, brick. Brick. It's Mm -hmm. Yeah, with some glass wraparound windows, and it's really a neat space. But then kind of added on to that, and kind of behind it will be like I think a nine story, nine to eleven oh, story wow. building really? of that's apartment exciting. spaces. Now that is subject to change, but that's what's being talked <laughs> about right this. now. Yeah, that's cool. And then um, on the bottom level, there will be um, retail type spaces. We're looking especially at food, um, coffee shops, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Bringing people in for that kind of entertainment and food is always a good thing to bring people in. And then up above that probably a exhibition type gallery space and some art studios. Fantastic. So this is this is amazing. What's so. the what's the time? 
The timeline on that, well, we've gone through a lot of it already. So, so just bringing in that um, company that helped us do the surveys, and they've developed lots of things around um, Colorado, but really around the U.S., um, that, you know, there's a process to this, but we're hoping within a couple of years. And again, don't quote me on that because you know how yeah. building projects go, but absolutely. But it's, it's a couple but of year what project. what a great vision. Yeah. yeah that's it's, huge. It's and amazing. Who was kind of leading the charge on that? Like looked at it and said, old bus station, we need to do something artistic with it. Oh, there's a really great guy named Adam Roy and he lives in Aspen, but he grew up in Grand Junction. Mm -hmm. So, um, he's there now, but he just really firmly believes in kind of renovating these spaces and, uh, and making things that are more useful for the whole entire community that'll mm -hmm. just kind of enrich the area. And he's got a heart for Grand Junction. Yeah. So, so he's in that, but then GJ Creates has also, you know, David Go that works with GJ Creates is a big part of this and his team there too. I'm not good at naming all the names, but, um, yeah, they know who they are and they're, yeah. yeah, it's been really, really interesting being a part of the committee and just kind of learning about these steps. It's totally different than anything I've ever done, but, um, to get in on the ground level and kind of, kind of see what people want out mm -hmm. there has just been so encouraging to me. Yeah. Wonderful. Erin, um, Let's talk about the art center a little bit and what what your involvement has been with them. I know my kids did classes, yeah. summer classes at the <laughs> art center, which was just absolutely wonderful. And Rachel is still there teaching those. Yeah. Um, they've expanded their gallery space, which is really nice to see because it's not a huge um, building, but they have some really nice rooms. Um, how do we get more people involved with the art center Oh my gosh. That's a hard question. I mean, because I feel like there is an, there is definitely a niche group yeah. that's there all the time. Mm -hmm. I think their classes fill up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can't keep enough instructors in there. I, I love that what they're doing with this whole teaching away, having that satellite mm -hmm. where they're teaching in a little bit different community. Um, you know, and Terry Shepard has been huge with them for years teaching their clay program and Robbie bro. Mm -hmm. She's been great, which I was, I kind of thought maybe she was involved in that. She Wasn't is. she? Yes. I was going to say. So <laughs> Robbie bro is also on that, uh, committee for the bus terminal. Okay. Yeah. And she's kind of a good bridge between the art center and the terminal. And I wouldn't doubt it if they I do some that, collaboration. I think too. that they would collaborate with that. I mean, you know, she is such a strong force. She was looking at the old beat factory because oh, yeah. she such a really great building. wanted, <laughs> no, I know. which I don't know who got that. <laughs> That's such a great building, but you know they were really hoping to get that. The art center wanted that to sort of just have another space because mm -hmm. we are growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot. I'm really glad the terminal is well, and that art center yeah. space is a little constrained. You know, it the is. parking lot is not huge. Yeah, and no. they really don't have any room to grow there. They're definitely outgrowing. So I think yeah. satellite. Mm -hmm. places would be huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're able to do something, you know, with collaborative with the terminal and I really would love to see a mountain palisade. Yeah. I know that's, you it know, makes I'm partial, but yeah. that's my hometown. Yeah. I grew up there. I'd love to see, and really we are thriving, but yeah, the art center is still thriving. It just, it's over. I mean, it really in my life here, I think, and you, you probably can remember too, yeah. I think it's gone through two or three transformations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just have to keep adding on, but they can only go so far in that space yeah. where they mm -hmm. are in the corner. Yeah. Um, and I think even though it's a little bit off the beaten path when you're thinking about the main street, you know, like a gallery night when there's so many things mm -hmm. to see down on main street, but people still manage to get their selves, oh, get absolutely. themselves over mm -hmm. there and go to whatever's happening. Yeah. I know they just had a fundraiser every year. They have a fun one. Their auctions. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, you know, they, they do keep up and there's so many supporters here, but of course, there can always be more. Yes. Oh, and so that begs the question. So if you're new to Grand Junction or someone like me who's uh, appreciative of the arts but busy and not always looking at calendars and things like that, how do you get plugged into the art scene here so you know what's going on? What's the best way to do that? Well, these days, I mean, social media. Social media. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably the best way. I love Instagram because for artists, it's just such a great way to to get the word out about things. Um, 
looking up things like downtown GJ, GJ Creates, um, the Art Center. They are always posting all the events Mm -hmm. and probably the paper and everything, you know. But I think, I mean, I think going out to the first Fridays is huge because you're meeting the people that are behind the art, right? Mm -hmm. All those shows are great because you're actually, and and you can ask the people, you can ask the artists, you know. Where are you? you know, do you have your own studio? Or are you work, Who are you working with? What galleries do you show at? Mm-hmm. And occasionally, too, the um, different groups will put on um, open studio tours, too. You're probably a part of that in Palisade. I know they did the Chocolate Walk a couple of years they, ago. Yeah, maybe. I've done. Yeah, I did. I did a couple <laughs> of those, but it means I have to clean my studio. <laughs> oh, so Aaron <laughs> might not be participating. <laughs> Another good reason for satellite, right? That's right. I'll, That's right. I'll just step into this space over here. <laughs> I'm not really an expert on how people find out about stuff. I mean, I think social media, but I do think, because I think what happens is we get lonely, like especially people that are moving here, this is what I've heard, is people get lonely in this valley because it's hard to make those, Mm -hmm. you know, acquaintances. Mm -hmm. So I think making sure that you're going to a first Friday event, Mm -hmm. you know, and just one of those could plug you into a whole community of people and signing up for classes. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's true. Meet a a few new people and that will lead you to something else, but getting involved in the art community. Um, Suzanne took a cooking class the other night that she really loved. And yeah, she said it was not only great and creative, but she met all kinds of people she didn't know yeah. before. And You know, that's something we maybe want to touch on a little bit here because I have heard that, I wouldn't say this part, but that Grand Junction is a little bit on the closed side. You know, we all have our little groups or our families here. Like if we've been raised here, we've got our Sunday night dinner mm-hmm. with mom and dad or whatever. It's kind of hard for someone to step into that sometimes. But I have noticed at the art shows, it's really easy to talk to people and the people are really receptive to mm-hmm. the conversations and, mm-hmm. you know. It's not that hard to exchange information and meet up at the next one or whatever. Agree. I mean, I keep thinking, oh, I'm going to make it to such and such. And then it goes by and I didn't make it. It Yeah. I want to do more. I was really glad I got to go to your show. Oh, me too. I can't believe you fit that in. (laughs) I wasn't there very long. (laughs) Um, What's next for you, Amy? Like, are there any any kind of techniques or things that you're interested in trying that you haven't done yet? You see, you want to go to Aaron's pottery classes. I should. <laughs> pottery was the one class that I did so terribly. My I'll husband you, what, you teach me, you teach me, you, I'll do a piece. Hey, okay. Collaboration. Okay. I think I know which one of us is going to do better than the other one. <laughs> My husband, when I first met him, he was making these beautiful clay teapots and and I just I could never get the mm. wheel down so that's right yeah you guys went on the bronze trip to Santa Fe we did yeah that's right a fateful because we pour you did you pour bronze I didn't well you I didn't was in a, I was in a mold making class okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so romantic sounding <laughs> we, we met in mold making <laughs> but yeah but I was always hanging around and doing stuff over there so yeah We should say that your husband is a creative also and that you all own Vintage Overland trailers. Yes. And produce those. That's right. And um, luckily for me, I have his expert skills to build a last minute frame, which is exactly what he did for my last show. Wonderful. (laughs) When I didn't have time to order two frames, he got down there in the shop and did it. So yeah, we collaborate a lot on things actually. And Mm -hmm. I'm constantly down in his studio working and yeah, and he gets in my way too. So are there any <laughs> materials that you're going to try out next go around or yes. you know, what's, what's on the horizon for you? Oh, I'm really excited because now that I'm finally really back in it, like I just, my only frustration is time. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got, well, I won't tell you how old I'm going to be this year, but <laughs> I have a lot to do. So I'm really excited about it. I'm right now, um, I'm kind of getting into some wood sculpture and woodworking, which I have always really liked. I liked the chisel and the mallet. And yeah. And it's just kind of a fun process. So I'm hoping to do some kind of two-dimensional wall sculptures. Um, I'd also like to do some hanging pieces, kind of um, kinetic type artwork. Um, Still keep up with the painting. Mm -hmm. I'll enjoy that forever, I think. I can't imagine not doing that. But probably with a little bit different materials. I'm looking at concrete right now and um, Mm -hmm. as kind of a surface to work on. And yeah, just uh, every day I have a new idea. So it's just a matter of pacing myself Mm -hmm. and keeping at it. But you're, you, you've shown not just here, but you've had some other shows up in the mountains. Yeah. Too, um, so. mostly in Aspen, um, 
Uh, a lot of the listeners might know of a place called the Red Brick Center, and that's that's a really neat place. It used to be a school, mm-hmm. and it's turned into an art center now. It's just a beautiful space. And so I've done um, group shows there uh, and also like a large group show and then a couple of small group shows. I'll have another one in July. Um, it'll be me and then three other artists, and it's an abstract show. So that'll be fun awesome. to see too. Awesome. Love it. What about you, Erin? What are oh you excited gosh. about doing next? Um there's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, so Vern Mosier, uh, who was my, one of my mentors, mm-hmm. my main mentor in clay, uh, I had him build a kiln for me, like the structure, but I have to put all the brick in it and brick it up. So that is on the top of the list yeah, because, a new you kiln. know, a new kiln that is a high fire kiln, which that's what I learned to fire in was a reduction fire kiln, um, which is really exciting, but also really intimidating because Uh you have to babysit those puppies all the time. Um, so that is on the list. And then my daughter challenged me to make sculptures because I said, I haven't done sculptures and I have some, my bronze work in the house and some of my clay sculptures in the house. And she said, mom, you need to do, you do. You need to go back and do some of your sculptures this year. Oh wow! I challenge you because she's oh, entering high good. school uh-huh. in this. She'll be a freshman because um, she's getting ready to graduate. And she said, "My freshman year." Oh, oh you, you can't say sculpture. no. I know. Anything she for the kids. I know anything. So <laughs> I need to. I need to do some of that. I'd and like to see that. I don't think I've ever seen any of your sculpture. Maybe I have. Really? I need to see more. I know there was. I mean, I'm surprised, but. I have, but it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. It was for sure. And I would love to get a cult, like, because there was a lot of talent. When we were in school, I would love to put together a show of some of the oh, really top, great? top. I mean, it would it, be so much it fun. It would be. We're all I'm, more mature now. We're all more mature. I'd love to see where people are because there's been so many, especially, I mean, all the women artists that I've known, it's been this big, like, hanging on. It's like you're pulling a thread through the tunnel. Mm, love it. <laughs> of, of, like, raising your children and your family and all of that stuff. And not trying letting, to keep up with your artwork. Trying to keep yeah. up with your artwork and not let that fall away from you. Mm-hmm. So I would love to get a group together mm-hmm. uh, that we went to school with and just put a show together. That'd that would be great. Yeah. A Joseph. That would be so That's fun. That's who we need. We need Joseph, Joseph went to school with us too. Yeah, he did. He was in my photography class. Is your <laughs> husband creative? Well, Joel is a trim carpenter. So he's okay. an amazing woodworker. Mm-hmm. And he had a business in Vail for years where he did. I did not know, know that. Yeah. But now he drives trains. Mm-hmm. So I keep trying to get him to do, because he does, he makes beautiful spoons. Mm. And I'm like, you should make the spoons and I'll put them in the salad bowl. Kind of goes with like, what you do. <laughs> he's like, you're insane. <laughs> in his free time. In my home. free time. Yeah. Both of you. Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you have, Aaron, for someone looking to make a career in the arts? I mean, it's not an easy way to support yourself or your family. you got to you got to love it. I but. mean, I, especially for, I mean, my, my mind goes specifically to clay work because there's so many stages of it. And mm-hmm. it has taken me a lifetime of collecting <laughs> the pieces mm-hmm. to put it together. So I've never lost the vision of it, but patience, I would say be patient mm-hmm. with yourself. Um, and, you know, in your, do what you can do. Mm -hmm. Do what you can do in your life when you, you know, if you get a minute, if you can steal a minute away just to, just to sketch. Don't put it off, right? Don't put it off. Because before you know it, Mm -hmm. you're in your fifties, right? No, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And you're like, there's so many more things I want to do. Absolutely. And I wish I hadn't wasted so much time when I I was younger. Yes. and And it's one of those things that it's not, it's not like riding a bike. You have to keep the skill going. I feel like you can't just... Definitely. Not to say that you lose it. It's more like running a marathon. It is more like running a marathon. You just have to keep going. And some mm. days are trudging. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to say it. Some days are not pretty. <laughs> you know? And especially, I mean, with clay work, there's so much failure. I mean, there it really is a really? lesson. It is a lesson. This is when I'm teaching my students. Um, I'm like, this is a lesson in letting go. Because if you love something, it's going to blow up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> how, many, how many batches 
like one out of 10, uh, just oh like complete gosh. fails. Well, I mean, what's, what's interesting. It so when you're working with clay, you're all, you always have some piece that is, cause they mine, you know, when I make the, cause I mix all my glazes, right? Mm-hmm. So they mine all those, all those different things from different parts of the world. So let's say you get an element from a different, a different mine. All of a sudden your glaze that has worked different properties. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work because there's something off in it. So then you're, you know, constantly problem solving that. Interesting. You know, so I, I mean, I don't know. You just, out of all the batches, I would say, you know, you just, you just lose, you just have to be ready to lose some of the pieces. It kind of teaches you to be flexible. It, it teaches you to be flexible. I mean, all my life lessons have been learned. <laughs> totally. <laughs> through I guiding, guess. through being a river guide, uh, <laughs> flipping rafts <laughs> unexpectedly and clay because it just, yeah, you can't, you can't really hang on to impermanence. You, yeah, absolutely. You have a vision. You think you're headed one direction. And then you're actually not that, you know, my issue is I have a vision and I have no idea how to get there. Like, I think I have a little bit of creativity in there and then I, I get lost in the, how am I going to get there? So I just never do it. So kudos to you all for (laughs) actually doing it. (laughs) What advice would you have Amy for someone that wants to have a career in the arts? Well, I would say if it is in you, you'll know it because it will nag at you. And you will not be able to escape it. Mm-hmm. Um, when I started college, and I told my dad, who also has a degree in art, and and he was a you know professional artist, a serious artist for years and years, um, he was like, "Are you sure that's what you want to do? Because you don't have to. You uh-huh. could do something else." You know, I, I know it was hard for him to see me go into that. Um, but if it's who you are, and you know, I tried to take years off. You know, like I said, I would kind of do a little bit here and there, just enough to keep my feet wet or to keep that muscle strength or whatever, you know, because it is like an exercise. But um, it was a frustration to not be doing it full time like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, I wanted to be a mom and I wanted to do all these other things, too. And that is kind of what women have to contend with and dads, too. But I think women have an even uh, bigger responsibility in that parenthood thing when it comes to art versus parenting. Um, anyway, it, it just, it kept eating at me yeah. and, um, I was a happy person, but I was a slightly frustrated person until I got back into it again. And then I just, uh, I kind of went at it and had a different approach to it. And that was to allow myself to make mistakes. So I would definitely say to somebody, you know, if you're going to choose this path, if it really is who you are and you can do it for fun, but if you want it as a career, uh, give yourself some leeway to make some mistakes and to realize too that it takes a long time. Mm. It's not something unless you know you're just a really lucky person or a genius. It's not something that you just pick up and you get into a gallery and then boom, you're set. Right. You may never have that. So kind of be prepared. You can have a plan B, but don't let your plan B take precedence over the plan A. Make sure Absolutely. you're like what you said, Absolutely. Aaron. Make sure you're still doing something always, even if it's even small. Even if it's not your. I mean, I've been watching again with social media, but this woman that, because she doesn't have a big printing press, but she takes, um, beer cans or soda cans and she etches into them and actually prints that metal from that. And I thought, what a genius way (laughs) to recycle your Mm. recycling and your, and you're still doing what you love, even though you don't have the studio space. Mm. So you know, if you don't have the studio space, you know, get creative. Get I mean, creative. That's what, that's what that's what really art is about anyway, right? It's yeah, like thinking it, completely out of it. And, and that's it. If you're a person who wants to do this as a career, you're a creative person already. And that is going to save your life. You're going to have to be creative. I've pieced jobs together, you know. Right. But I promised myself that I would always do something that was in the art world, whether it was teaching or, you know, working for an art production company or whatever it was. Um it always had to do with art. So try to stay in there somehow. Well, and you really are your own standalone. I mean, you have, because we both come from a legacy of art, uh-huh. which is, but That's you so have cool. created your, like your own thing, which I love. Oh, thank you. You yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Both of you. I, well, I didn't go in. I mean, one of the reasons that I did not go into 2D is because there was no way in <laughs> <laughs> I was going to attempt because I was really intimidated by my grandfather's artwork, you oh, know? Yeah. And he is a famous artist. He is a yeah. famous artist. <laughs> so cool. So, yeah. So Aaron, if people want to know more about how to buy 
what you create or take your classes? How do they find out about them? Um, so you can go to my website, ESM Pottery Farm. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. That's the most current. I love your videos, it, by yeah. the way. <laughs> oh, great. thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram, I try to keep it really current, even with my class schedule, because, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, reach out to every single person that says, I want to take it. Send me a, send me a link. Just follow me. Yeah. Just follow <laughs> me on Instagram. Um, yeah. And, you know, or stop by the farm too. the farm. Mm-hmm. Go check the farm out. Yeah. If you have not been to the farm, you have to go check the farm out because it's a really amazing space. Super cool. And that's Allegheny Meadows. Allegheny Meadows and Gavin. And Brooks. Gavin Brooks. And it's just, I mean, it's a, it, that is also, it's a treasure for the Valley. Mm-hmm. It was really, that's a gift for the Valley for sure. So excited about that. And Amy, where do people find more about your work? Well, the best place is also Instagram, and it's just Amy Purser on Instagram, A M I P U R S E R. <laughs> um, I am currently building a new website, and so, um, but I'll have links to that on Instagram and everything too, or whatever you can find me through that. Awesome. Well, before we uh, close up for the day, I know when we first got here, we were talking about you know that. PBS interview (laughs) from Saturday Night Live. We were having fun with that. So we're we're not going to talk about sweaty balls, but (laughs) we could. I had to to throw it in there. Mine are the best. (laughs) Yours are the best. I cherish them. (laughs) Guys are awesome. (laughs) Well, thanks everybody for watching and listening. Please support the arts in our community. Um, follow these ladies, uh, on their Instagram and that will lead you to follow other artists as well, because I know that you all follow other artists we in have town. A few, yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And so yes. go down the rabbit hole, right? Oh, like, go so down fun. the rabbit hole. Yeah. Set a day aside a week, right? <laughs> Find the artists in this town, follow them, support them. Um, that's what, one of the things that makes a beautiful thriving community is the art scene. And I think we can never have too much of it here. So let's keep going. Yes, absolutely. Thank you all for your creative work and sharing your time with us today. Oh, thank you, Christy. Such a pleasure. Cheers. 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 (laughs) Don't break my mug. All right. We'll see you next time on the Full Circle Podcast. Bye. Thanks for listening. This is Christy Reese signing out from the Full Circle Podcast.